Namaste and welcome to our Earth Day uh, practice today. Uh, we're doing this recording out here in the Fauna Forest at the Circle of Trees, which is a favorite spot for our retreat, um, our retreat participants to come to. And it's also a favorite spot for me and Beecher to come and sit and do our little uh, nature journaling or meditation. And so I thought it was a perfect spot to do our Earth Day uh, class from today. So I'm going to ask you to take a seat. Um, we're going to have just a little bit of breath work and get started with our class. So you can sit on a mat, you can sit on the floor, on a prop of some sort. You can also sit in a chair. Um, but if you're sitting in a chair, I want you to have your feet grounded. So if your feet don't reach the floor, put your feet on some blocks or a couple of books so that your feet are even. And you can also lay down on your back with your feet grounded, uh, knees bent and feet grounded. So take whatever position is best um, going to serve you today. And then once you find your position, let's go ahead and get started. And we're going to start with just closing the eyes. And I'm going to ask you to bring your awareness to that collection of bones that make up your feet. There are many bones, and I forget the exact number, but there are many bones in the feet that all come together to form our feet and the mechanism for walking. And that is our connection to the earth on a daily basis. So just take a moment to either feel, sense, or imagine all of those bones in the intricate way in which they are connected in order for us to have that connection to earth and to actually propel us forward in this life and this journey on this earthly journey. And as you connect to that um, sensation or imagination or feeling of your feet and all those bones in your feet and how they connect you to earth, begin to also connect to your breath. Connecting to your breath is one of the quickest ways for us to um, really become present and grounded in our body. And as you do that, as you connect into your deep belly breath and your awareness to your feet and all the way up your legs and the bones of the, of the legs, become aware of that collection of bones that make up your pelvis, those two halves that come together as you sit or lie on the pelvis. And if you can bring your awareness to the very base of your spine at the tailbone and just at the inside of the tailbone, the cossageal or the cossacks, um, just bring your awareness there as if you could imagine that part of you connecting to the energy of the earth. So from your feet up the bones of your legs, to the bones of your pelvis, to that base of your spine, the cossacks, the tailbone. And then as you inhale, imagine drawing energy up from the earth, through your legs, through your feet, and into the pelvis. And as you exhale, imagine that breath traveling up your spine, all the way to the center of the brain, to the pineal gland in the crown of the head. So our pineal gland is shaped like a pine cone. And here we are out in the forest breathing. And the pineal gland um, helps us to, is light sensitive and helps us to connect to our circadian rhythms, our biorhythms with the change of day and night and the change of seasons. And it's also said to be where we dream, where we connect with our intuition. So imagine that earth energy traveling from the base of the spine all the way up the spine, right to the center of the brain, to the pineal gland and up the crown. And allowing your body as you breathe to be that connection from the energy of the earth, of that stability, of that solidness of your bones, all the way up to the crown, to the center of the brain, to that light center where we are enlightened and we have dreams and intuition and imagination. 
And continue with this breath, breathing into the belly, drawing the earth energy in and up, and exhaling all the way up your spine, right to the center of the brain and up into the sky. And as you continue with this visualization with your eyes closed, see if you can bring your inhale and exhale into samavriti or equal breath. So maybe doing a count so that your inhale matches your exhale and vice versa. This is another way for us to come into the present moment and balance very quickly by using our breath in Samavriti. So just stay with that breath for a little bit longer. And I'm going to read you a little quote to get our practice going for Earth Day. So looking up at the sky, I vow to remember this infinite ceiling in every room of my life. Hearing crickets at night, I vow to remember to keep my practices as simple, just over and over again. Falling asleep at night, I vow to enjoy the dark and the silence and rest in the vast unknown. Let's take three more breaths. This time with these three breaths, let's inhale through the nose and as you exhale, open the mouth and slowly release all the breath. And as you release the breath on your exhale, release the day, release the thoughts, release the to-dos, just release everything and do two more breaths like that, inhaling deeply through the nose. And exhaling out the mouth, you can even stick out your tongue. <sighs> Letting it all go. One more breath like that, this is called lion's breath when you stick out your tongue like this. And then gently float your eyes open and whether you're practicing at home indoors or whether you're practicing outdoors for Earth Day as I am today, just take a moment to take in your surroundings and that infinite sky above you even if it's imagining the infinite sky or looking out the window and then imagining or sensing or feeling the actual Earth depending where you are, that solid surface beneath you and how it supports you and how the earth nourishes us in every way. Nourishes us through the oxygen created by the trees growing in the earth. Nourishes us by the food that has grown where almost everything we eat comes from the earth. And nourishes and sustains us from the shelter that we create from the products of the earth. So just taking a moment of reciprocity, of acknowledging all that we receive from the earth and acknowledging how we can give back to the earth on especially this week, this day of Earth Day. And as you bring these thoughts into your awareness, take a moment to set your intention for this day and for this practice. And once you have your intention set, breathing your awareness into your intention Let's make our way onto hands and knees and set up for cat-cow. Sorry, I have some prickly things in the forest here with me today. <laughs> so let's start. I always feel that when I've been sitting, my knees get stiff. So let's start by just extending one leg at a time. I'm starting with my left leg. You can do the same. Lift up through your shoulders so that your shoulder blades slide away from one another and feel into all 10 fingers as the fingers spread wide here. So we're really acknowledging that connection with the earth and acknowledging the connection with both of our feet and shin out behind us as well and feeling that support and that solidity here. And then let's draw the left knee in and extend through the right. 
and sometimes it's nice to rock back and forth and if you are choosing to rock back and forth just acknowledging that feel really feeling into that solid surface and imagine how difficult this would be if you were doing this on a soft surface this would be almost impossible to do if you were doing it on a an air-filled surface or a waterbed so just having that moment of awareness of how this solid surface helps us move throughout our life and throughout our day and draw that right knee in and let's start with a few rounds of cat cow drawing the heart forward and just looking toward the horizon and if you are outside or near a window just noticing what you see outdoors and as you exhale drawing the belly in curling the spine to the sky letting the head drop maybe turning your head from side to side and continuing with your breath but really working on slowing down your practice today the vibration of the earth being as solid as it is is a slower vibration than some of the other elements like water air fire and ether and it relates to all the solid parts of our body like our bones which are also at a slower vibration and contain all the elements of the earth. And so really slowing the breath. And as we slow the breath, allowing ourselves to have that awareness of both our body and the earth and how the two connect. And then as you finish your last exhale, just come to a neutral tabletop. And let's again extend that left leg out behind us. We did this in our last uh, class, but we're going to move into extended tabletop. So your options here are keep both hands grounded and just play with floating that leg up. Uh, the option is keep that leg down and extend your arm or alternate between these two, depending what's happening in your body today. And you could also have your hands on blocks to take a little pressure off wrists and shoulders. And then I'm going to give you various options here and you choose what works best for you. And if you move into one and realize the previous option is better for you, just move back into that. Be kind to yourself, nourish yourself through today's practice, regardless of what options I'm giving you. So you can start by floating that leg up, play with that option. Start secondly by bringing the right arm to the belly. So left leg is up, right arm is in my belly, reminding me to lift up away from the earth as I press into my left hand and my right um, shin and top of my foot. So I might stay here and just work with everything I've got going on here or extend that right arm. So we're really working with our strength and stability here as we lengthen and finding our balance through our core here. Let's take one more breath. And let's all release it down regardless of where you were. I know also if you're having wrist issues, you can do this from dolphin with your forearms down. It feels a little bit different, but you still get to do the lengthening and the breath work that the rest of us are doing. So let's start with the right leg now. So start with your toes down on the mat. And remember, you can play just right here. Or you can just move with your arm with your foot down. Or bring that left hand to the belly and really work at lifting up through the shoulder and maybe floating that leg up and really extending through that whole foot through all of that collection of bones of your feet that are normally collected to the earth and maybe you extend that left hand staying lifted and keeping that connection to your core as we lengthen and find that stability within our body moving from our core Taking one more breath, using your ujjayi breath here, and then release down. Maybe you want to take a one or two rounds of cat-cow here, just to release any tension that might have occurred in that movement. And then let's find child's pose. And as we come into child's pose, find a solid place for your um, head to rest. And it might be on your stacked fist or on a block, or it might be all the way down on the mat. I'm not sure how my microphone is going to react on poses where I'm down on the mat, so I'm not going to go completely into it, just to make sure that you can still hear me. 
But as you connect to your forehead down to the mat, I'll give you a couple of options here. You can keep your arms extended. You can bend your elbows with palms together and point as you press elbows into the earth, point your fingers up to the sky, keeping head down on the mat. And then of course, there's always options for those of you with knee issues to stay higher up on your knees and you can still do the same practices with the upper body of either arms extended or bending at the elbows. So again, working with what's going on in your body and making the practice serve you without forcing and without causing yourself stress in the body. From child's pose, use your next inhale to rise up, curl your toes under. And again, let's connect with that core, that strength of our trunk. If you think of a tree and the strength of the trunk of the tree, think of your torso as that strength. Extend your right leg straight out behind you, toes down on the mat, lifting up through the shoulders. And again, if this is appropriate for you, you can also do this on forearms. Lift your left knee, shin and foot up off the mat. So this is strengthening in the shoulders, but really connecting with that core. Take one more breath here and lower back down. Draw your right knee in. Let's extend left straight out behind us. Again, lift up through your shoulders, wrapping the shoulder blades around the sides of the body and then lift the right shin, foot, knee up off the ground. Belly's drawn in. One more breath and place it back down. You can bend both knees and we're going to move into downward facing dog. Some of you again, where dog's not appropriate, can stay in your tabletop. Curl your toes under, lift the knees up, send the hips up and back. Really bring awareness into the feet that are connected to the earth, into all 10 fingers, especially your index finger and your thumb that are connected to the earth. And press the top of your mat away from you as you lift the hips up off your waist. Take one more breath here. And then as you exhale, the bottom of your exhale, you can step, you can walk, you can float to the top of your mat. Inhaling, lifting the heart halfway, reaching through the crown, reaching through the sit bones. Exhale, we bow. Maybe your knees are bent a little bit here as you press into the earth and rise up, reaching up, looking to that beautiful sky if you're fortunate enough to be outside as we practice and draw into your heart center. Release your hands down. So we're going to go through some sun salutations or the beginning of sun salutations and connecting with some of the lunges. And lunges can be really grounding as we ground down through our lower body but allows us to lift up to the sky above and enjoy that beautiful expanse of sky. So let's inhale and reach up using your ujjayi breath here that's restriction at the back of the throat. Exhale we bow down. Inhale to lift the heart lengthen through the spine. Exhale step your right foot back coming into a lunge. So at the beginning of class we talked about the, the cossacks, the base of the spine, the tailbone, and the pineal gland. So think about moving those two away from one another. The crown of the head and the very base of the spine moving in opposite directions here. And at the same time, think about that left foot grounding down and the ball of the back foot grounding down, finding that strength and stability in your lunge. Take one breath here. And as you exhale, we're shifting into reverse lunge. So lifting those left toes, those front toes, and moving that front leg towards straight. You might have your hands on blocks here, or you might be up on your fingertips. Taking a nice inhale and imagining that energy of the roots all down the back of your thighs into your heel as you press your heel down. Finding that grounding. Take one more breath. And then use your inhale to come back to our starting position, lower the back knee 
And options here, you can keep your hands ground or on your blocks. You can bring hands to your knee or inhale, reach up to the sky. And maybe inviting a back bend as we lift, whoops, <laughs> as we lift the heart up to the sky. Reach up to the sky. The belly is contained, but the heart is lifting. Gaze slightly lifted. Take one more breath. And then bring the hands down through center, hands down to the mat, curl the back toes under, lift the knee, and step forward. Inhale, lift the heart. Exhale, we bow, stepping left foot back, same sequence. So again, bring your awareness to the base, the inside base of your tailbone, and the center of the brain where the pineal gland is, the crown of the head and try to lengthen. They're moving in opposite directions. Drawing energy up to the crown and energy from the crown back down to the base of the spine. Take one more breath here like this. Hands on blocks, fingertips or palms on the floor. And this time as we exhale, reverse lunge. So walking the hands back, lifting those front toes, the right toes, the back heel might come closer to the earth as the roots are growing out of that heel, pressing into your front heel to activate the hamstrings. Take one more breath here. And then use your, your in, next inhale to come back to our starting position, dropping the back knee. Options same as the first side. Hands can stay down on your blocks. They might rise up to your knee. Or you might inhale and reach up to the sky, inviting a little back bend, lifting the heart ever higher, lifting your, through your breath. And imagine that energy traveling from the base of your tailbone, the cossacks, up to the center of your brain, the center of your head, and traveling back down again. One more breath. Feel into both feet. Exhale, hands come down. We lift the back knee. This time we're stepping back, downward facing dog. And again, always options for child's pose. If down dog doesn't work for you, you can step forward to mountain pose and wait for us to meet you there. Or you can come forward down into tabletop. And we're all somehow, in your way, going to find your way down onto your belly, onto your mat. So you can do knees, chin, chest, you can do chaturanga, or however is going to work for your body. And hopefully I'm not squashing my microphone here. So we're going to inhale and rise up into our cobra pose. And exhale, come down. Two more times like that. Feel the pubic bone ground down to the earth, the hands ground down and the tops of the feet ground down. And exhale back down one more time. And exhale, come on down. Let's bring the arms out to the side like the wings of the birds that fly over the earth. Lengthen through both feet. And as you inhale, lift the heart, lift your gaze, lift your wings and lengthen the legs so much that they float up away from the earth. The pubic bone is ground down. Take one more breath and exhale. Release down. Rock your hips from side to side. Let's shift back into child's pose. Breathe into the back body. Maybe rock side to side. Inhale, rise up. And exhale into your downward facing dog or staying in tabletop if that's more appropriate for you today. So this next little short sequence you can do again from tabletop. You can do it from down dog as I'm going to demonstrate. You can also do it from dolphin by bringing your forearms down. So choose the variation that works for what's going on in your body today. We're going to start with the right foot floating it up and so let's see if we can make this movement nice and fluid like the rivers of the earth draw the knee towards your nose we're going to do this three times nice and fluidly inhale draw the leg up high exhale draw the knee in close 
nice and fluid. Think of the rivers flowing. And on this third one, as we draw the knee in, we're going to step it up between our hands for our lunges once again. So we'll drop that back knee. Options to rise up in the various places. Knee or hands up to the sky. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, press your palms together. Draw your hands to your heart center. Twist to your right. Just bring a little movement into the spine. Really feel into the stability of that right foot grounding down and the back foot, back knee grounding down. Take one more breath here. Maybe drawing the heart back, drawing the head back. And then coming back to center. Whoops. We're going to bring our hands down to the mat or down to blocks. And just for a moment, lift your back foot up. So we're just bending that knee. We're not doing anything else. We're just playing with this idea of lifting the back foot up. And then float it back down. We're going to walk it back and come into a little hamstring. We press into that um, heel. Your hands can be on blocks here. Walk it forward. Lift the back knee. Step back, down dog, tabletop, or dolphin. So now let's move to the left foot. So again, like the flowing rivers of the earth, fluidly float that left leg up, three-legged dog. And as you exhale, draw it towards your belly, towards your nose. Two more times. Inhale, nice and fluid with your breath. Exhale, nice and fluid. Draw it in. Draw it in tight. Last one, inhale, up, and exhale as you draw it in, lift up high on your back foot, step it up between your hands, we're in our lunge once again, dropping the back knee, taking your option of hands to knee, maybe reaching up to the sky, inviting a back bend here, taking one more breath. And then drawing hands down through your heart center. We're twisting to the left. So maybe catching that elbow or catching that knee. And I forgot to say this on the first side. You could also have forearm on the knee, left hand on your hip as you twist. Again, doing the variations that are working for you, that are serving you best today. Taking one more breath here. And allowing the twist to happen through the belly center here. And then coming back to center. Maybe you reach it up before we bring our hands down to the mat. And then we're just going to shift forward and bend that front knee. So my knee cap itself isn't on the floor. It's kind of the bottom of my thigh or the very of just above my knee that's down. So you're not grinding your kneecap in there. You can also have a blanket under your knee because we're going to work through another variation of this. Drop the back foot. Let's lift the back knee and this time step forward. In our forward fold, let's ground down through our feet, through the big toe mound, through the little toe mound, through the inner heel and the outer heel and let the head drop towards the earth. Think of that connection between the center of the brain, the crown of the head, the pineal gland and the spine is that highway all the way to the root, to the base of the tailbone, the, co the cossacks. And from there, you can almost feel the highway down your hamstrings into your feet. If you saw a picture of the nerves of the leg, they would look like the roots of the tree traveling out of the pelvis down into the legs into the feet. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, bow down, belly draws in, circle the arms wide, press into your feet, into the earth, and rise up, drawn to your heart center. I really hope that some of you are getting to practice this practice outside because where I'm standing here in the circle of trees is just gorgeously warm and sunny, and although there's no leaves and no greenery, it just feels like a summer day. Release your hands. Let's take a breath or two. In your mountain pose, think about the earth and how the mountains rise up out of the earth 
in their solid form of rock reaching up to the sky and imagine your body like that the base strong and solid rising up reaching up to the clouds to those snow-capped mountains and maybe we can reach our hands up to the sky right now staying in your mountain pose and just simply reaching up to the sky palms facing forward Take an inhale here, turn your palms to face one another, and as we exhale, let's sit down in chair pose. Sending the sit bones back behind you and drawing the feet apart, really feeling that strength and stability of the legs here. Take one more inhale, we're gonna step the right foot back for warrior one. So pivoting that back foot down, the back heel down. If for whatever reason that doesn't work for your body, you can stay up in crescent by being on the ball of your foot as well. So we're lifting heart to the sky here, grounding down through strong legs and that connection to earth and that connection to earth allows us to rise up to the sky. Just like the trees rooted in the earth right now and they're reaching, their sap is flowing up, up, up to the top. The energy of the tree is traveling from the earth up into the branches, ready to burst forth with their possibilities of greenery. Take one more breath here, and let's release our hands, intertwining your fingers, and lift the heart just a little bit more. Lift your gaze just a little bit more, and at the same time, really bring your awareness to the grounding down of the feet. One more breath. Feel open and expansive, yet grounded at the same time. And then hands can come to your heart center. We're opening for warrior two, so maybe a little wider stance here. And allowing the arms to float up and extend. And then finding whatever appropriate bend as this thigh moves down towards the earth and the back foot is pressing down really finding that strong warrior pose for you, that strong warrior stability, so that you can expand in all directions. And just so we can expand a little bit more, let's keep the lower body where it is and move into peaceful warrior. Expand those side ribs, expand your vision up to the sky. Let's take one more breath here, expansion and moving into side angle. So forearm can come to the knee and you can either keep the hand, the right hand on your hip or reach it overhead. So we're creating this long line of energy from the earth all the way up, drawing up, 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 up and overhead. So we're gonna stay here for a few more breaths. You have the option to stay right here some of you might bring fingers down to the floor or a black block, but by doing so, don't let your body fold forward. We're going to open up to the sky here, and maybe you still just reach overhead. Some of you might even play with a bind, with the back arm coming behind you, the bottom arm reaching towards the hand. It might just come to your thigh, or you might really open into your bind. Doesn't matter which variation you've chosen. What matters is if you're able to stay connected to your ujjayi breath in whichever variation you've chosen. Let's release. Straighten that front leg. Walk the back foot in just a little bit. We're going to move into triangle pose. So if you had a block, your hand might be on a block. Hand might come to your shin. The right arm is going to just roll us open. If you've lost that opening, reach up to the sky. Feel into that strong connection of both feet. As we press down, it allows us to expand in our triangle pose. If you need more grounding, look to the earth, to your front foot. If you feel like you want more expansion, look up to the sky. Take one more breath here and use your inhale to rise up. Let's turn both toes to the long side of your mat. Take a moment for present moment awareness. Notice your connection to the earth. Notice your breath 
moving from feet, legs to the um, tailbone, the cossacks. And the exhale breath can help you to rise up, bring that earth energy all the way up through the brain and out your hands. Let's do that one more time. Imagine the breath, the energy, the prana moving from the earth up. And then let it travel from the base of the spine all the way up, right to the center of the brain and expanding all the way up to the sky. One last breath like that, visualizing this energy, the prana, the life force moving up with your breath. And then release your hands intertwined behind your back or hands to your hips with thumbs pointing towards your spine. Take an inhale, lift the heart. And exhale, whichever position you've taken with your hands, fold forward. If you had hands on hips, you might allow your hands to travel down your thighs and grasp onto ankles, big toe, or hands down on the earth to really feel into the earth here. Let the crown of your head drop towards the earth and notice your um, perspective. My perspective looking at the forest upside down is spectacular right now. Absolutely spectacular. Gives you a whole new way of looking at things. Take one more breath here. Take it all in. Press strongly into all four corners of both feet. Inhale, slowly lift halfway with your ujjayi breath. Hands can be on your mat, on blocks, or on your ankles or shins. Exhale, bow down one more time. Let's do that actually two more times. Inhale, lift halfway. Whatever your hands are on or is available to you. Exhale, the belly draws in. We bow down. Let your crown drop towards the floor, towards the earth. And last one, inhale, come up halfway. This time we're going to stay here. Release your hands to your hips or to your uh, shins and come all the way up. Nice, strong foundation. Turn your left toes to the top of your mat. Hands can come down to the mat, either stepping forward to mountain pose or stepping back to downward facing dog. If you've chosen to step back and downward facing dog, we can take a flow here. If you've chosen to step forward in mountain pose, just come into your connection to the earth and to your breath. If you're flowing, come forward to plank on an inhale. Use your exhale to lower. Use your inhale to lift the heart, lift the gaze, open through the front body. Exhale back, downward facing dog. If you're in mountain pose, stay connected, samasti to he, your center, your breath, your focus. Those of you in down dog, take one more breath. Use your exhale to step, float, or walk to the top of your mat. Inhale, lift the heart. Exhale, bow, press into both feet. Let's rise up and reach up and draw into your heart center. Take a breath here. And let's inhale, lift our arms, pressing down into your feet. Turn your palms to face forward in our mountain pose and stay here for a breath. Lengthening up just like that mountain with the strong foundation, the strong base, the peak reaches up into the sky, into the clouds, into the blue expanse. Turn your palms to face one another. Press down into both feet as we sit down, moving a little closer to the earth in chair pose. And then we're going to step back with our left foot for warrior one. So you can have your arms reaching up to the sky here. You can also bring your hands to your hips because we're going to be moving there shortly. Taking one more breath, whichever hand position you're in. And then we're going to either release hands to clasp behind your back or hands to your hips, thumbs towards your spine. Inhale, lift the heart a little bit higher. Maybe bend the knee a little bit more. Feel that strong connection to the earth, that strong base in this wide-legged 
stance. And then release hands to heart center. Let's open for warrior two. Spread your arms wide. I'm just gonna change directions. Find your warrior two position. Find your breath in your warrior two. Second side as you float the arms up and extend. Ground down through your feet and draw up that strength of the energy from the earth and that stability. From that stability, you can extend and be expansive in your warrior two. Looking over your front fingers, grounding down into both back foot as well as front foot. Feel expansive here, expansive with stability. And then use your inhale to move into peaceful warrior as we find expansiveness in those right side ribs and the whole right side body as we extend keeping strong stability in the lower half of the body. Take one more inhale breath to fan those ribs open and let the light in. And then use your exhale to move into your side angle. So again, you have options here. Forearm can stay on the, on the front knee, thigh. You can extend the arm overhead with palm facing towards the earth, grounding down through the outside corner of that back foot. Sinking this front thigh lower if you can. And maybe rotating those left ribs up to the sky. Maybe even looking up to the sky. If you need more grounding, look to your front foot. Some of you might bring that bottom arm to a block or to your mat or your fingertips. But don't fold forward. Roll that chest open as you extend over. Some of you might even play with coming into a bind. But as again, if you come into your bind, don't fold forward, roll it open. Be expansive, draw the back of your skull back. Draw your upper back back. Take one more breath here. Feeling that strength of the legs. And then release your hand down. We're gonna straighten the front leg. We're gonna move into triangle. And I like to shorten my stance a little bit for the triangle. You might have your bottom hand on a block or your fingertips on the floor. But what we want to avoid, again, is that folding forward. We're rolling open. So that might mean we come up a little bit higher onto the shin and roll open and expand. And as we press into both feet strongly, we can have that expansiveness in the upper body in the arms and, and even bring your hands together and expand to earth and to sky. Lean the upper back back and the back of the skull pulls back. Take one more breath here, drawing earth energy up and exhaling, expanding it in all directions. And then inhale, come all the way up, turn uh, both toes to the long side of your mat. And let's just pause here for some present moment awareness. Feeling into the energy of the lower body, drawing it up and extending up and out. Staying connected with your ujjayi breath. If you've lost it, our, our goal is to stay with slow ujjayi inhales and exhales through our whole practice. But sometimes we forget when we're struggling in some poses. We need to come back to that breath, whether it's the easy poses where we forget or the really difficult ones that we forget. So come back to your ujjayi breath. And then turn your toes to the top of your mat. I'm going to give you some options here. You can either... Um, Windmill your hands down to the mat and step back through downward facing dog, or you can step forward for mountain pose, depending what's going on in your body. We're all gonna eventually meet in mountain pose. So if you go there right now or meet us there, your choice. If you've chosen down dog, you might cho choose to flow through a vinyasa, choosing your plank, your back bend, Maybe lingering in your back bend and using your exhale to find downward facing dog. Connect through your feet, through your hands. If you're in down dog, use your exhale 
to step walk or float to the top of your mat. Take an inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, bow down, press into both strong feet and rise up. Draw into your heart center. Take a moment in your mountain pose to reconnect to that earth connection, that earth energy. The reciprocity of the give and take. As we press down, we are able to rise up. And then let's inhale, reach up to the sky. And as we exhale, step uh, folding forward and stepping back with the right foot. So we're rising up into crescent moon, so staying up on the ball of the foot. So we reach it up. We're not staying in crescent moon for long, but just feeling through the strength of your legs and feet and that connection. And then we're going to bring hands down to the mat. We're going, we've done this pose like a flying dragon before, begin to reach your hands forward and shift forward on that left leg and float your dragonfly tail up into the air. You can stay in this position of reaching the arms forward or I've got a very uneven surface here. You can begin to play with balancing in your dragonfly posture. Take one more breath. And release that back foot down, coming into your lunge. We're just going to step it forward and move into our second side. So step it forward, inhale, halfway lift, exhale, bow. And let's inhale and rise up and draw into your heart center. Take a breath here in mountain pose, and then we'll go ahead and get ready for our second side. So inhaling to reach up. Exhaling, we fold, and this time left foot steps back for crescent moon on the ball of that back foot. We rise up with the strength and stability through that collection of bones of our feet, then we're able to reach it up. Take a breath here as we lift a little higher, and then hands are coming down to your mat, and you can use blocks here too, which I didn't say on the first side. So we're going to begin to claw, walk our hands forward and float that back tail, our dragonfly tail. This, the right uh, knee is bent. So you can stay in this position of just simply lengthening from your fingertips to your back foot. Or you can play with the idea of balance, which I don't think I'm going to be able to do on this side, on this lumpy surface that my foot is on. <laughs> but play with the idea of balance and also play with the idea of length and then we're stepping that foot down into our lunge position and let's step that right foot back into down facing dog or stepping back into tabletop for those of you that are dealing with the shoulder wrist issues let's take a nice breath here you can flow if you wish. Or you can come into child's pose for a couple of breaths before we move into our cooling down poses. Bringing your forehead to the earth or to a solid surface such as your blocks. And then we're inhaling up. We're going to move into pigeon pose. So you can move into pigeon straight from your uh, tabletop. We're going to start with the right leg. Or you can move into downward facing dog and move into pigeon from here. Moving into three legged dog with that right leg. Drawing it up. But we're all going to start with upright pigeon. So maybe your hands are on blocks here. And rather than sinking low, you can lift up a little bit. So it brings a little more strengthening into the hip flexors, into the hip muscles. So this is a very strong connection to the earth with our legs here in a different manner than we normally do. Take one more breath in your upright pigeon. 
and then moving into your sleeping pigeon. Keeping the spine long as you find your way down. And again, I'm not going to go completely into the pose, so I'm not batting my microphone around. But you can stack fists under your forehead. You can place a block under your forehead. Some of you more flexy people might reach your arms long and bring your forehead to the mat. But what matters is the sensations that you're feeling and the mindset as you release into the support of the earth. So staying connected with your breath and noticing how the more you allow yourself to be supported, the more you're able to let go. And you might need extra support of something under that right hip. And you've got one more breath here on this side. And then I'm going to offer you, we played with some of the lunges a little bit, of bringing um, your left forearm onto the mat, parallel to the top of your mat, and bending that back leg. And you might just stay right here. You might reach the right arm back to your left foot and open into a little bit of a twist. You might stay here for a few breaths. Some of you might work with the other forearm, the right forearm being down, and we're rotating left arm back towards the back foot. Some of you might even move into King Pigeon, not my pose today, but King Pigeon is upright and reaching both hands to your back foot, which isn't going to happen for me today. But just stay for another breath in whichever variation you're doing. And maybe it's both hands down with the knee bent and not reaching back at all. Just playing with a little more opening and that grounding to the earth. And then let's all release down. And either you're coming back into tabletop to transition to your second side, or you're coming straight back into downward facing dog. And we transition left leg either floats up before it comes forward or just coming forward. Again, we want to start with our upright position and a little bit lifted through the hips rather than allowing ourselves to completely sink. Your hands could be on blocks here. You could be on your fingertips. But think about lifting the heart like you do in cobra or upward facing dog here. The sunshine out here today is just amazing. Take one more breath at our upright position and then begin to keep the spine long as you walk it down into Sleeping Pigeon. Finding your position to rest your forehead on and allowing the breath to help you make space as you connect most of your front body with the earth here. Let's have one more breath in your sleeping pigeon. And then we can work with those variations. My favorite is the right arm parallel to the top of the mat as you bend the back leg. And again, this might be where you stay with both arms down. Or you might rotate and reach the left arm back to the right foot, drawing the head back into a little bit more of a twist. Some of you might work with the left forearm down and reaching the same arm back to the same foot, right arm to right foot. And then again, some of you might be able to move into king pigeon with both arms reaching back. As I said, not happening for me. Take another breath or two in whichever variation that you are working in. And then make your way back either tabletop, down dog, child's pose, whatever is appropriate for you today. And if you've taken down dog and you want to do one last flow before we uh, move out of our um, standing, uh, sorry, until we move into our cool down poses, you can take one last flow. 
And then we're all going to meet on a seat. And just take a moment, checking to see which poses I didn't get fit into today's practice, which we'll catch next week. Um, so as you come down to a seat, we're moving into um, Baddha Kanasana, which really helps us connect to our root. So you can have your feet, soles of your feet together, knees dropping open. You can have your feet close. Some of you, it feels better to have your feet further away. And you can use your hands to support you here. But this really helps us to connect to the root and all the way down the legs and into the feet. And that's all part of the connection to the earth itself. So you can stay here with your hands beside you, supporting you, lifting up nice and straight. Some of you might want to bring your hands to your feet in front of you. And some of you might even want to fold forward. Don't make that a goal. It's only if it feels appropriate for you and only if it feels like this is what your body needs or would like today, not what your ego would like today. So just taking a couple more breaths here. And if you're sitting upright, keeping your heart lifted, and the back of the skull drawn back so that your ears are over your shoulders. And then lean back onto your elbows, draw your knees into your chest, reach the feet up to the sky, open them wide, and come back up to seated. That's one way to get there. Get there however is appropriate for you. So if you need to have a towel or something rolled up under your knees here for your hamstrings, do so. But we're trying to get the center of the thigh and the toes pointing up to the sky. So the whole back of the leg is pretty much grounded to the earth. So again, you can have your hands supporting you here. You can have your hands in front of you. Keep the feet flexed. Some of you are gonna fold forward. Again, not a goal, just different variations for different bodies according to what's happening in your body. But whatever position you are in, or however deep or not deep you are in this posture, Upavista Kanasana, just take a moment to close your eyes and feel into those parts of you that are connected to the solid surface beneath you, and hopefully some of you that might even be the earth. Breathe deeply, bringing your awareness to that end of the tailbone, the, the cossacks right inside there, that ball, like a ball of energy. And as you inhale, draw that energy up all the way to the center of the brain, to the pineal gland. Connecting with our biorhythm. And then as you exhale, allowing that, imagining sensing that energy traveling back down. So like this highway of energy traveling up and energy traveling back down. Our bodies, that connector between the energy of earth and the energy of consciousness up above. So you can feel into the silence. And then release out of that. I'm going to give you a couple of options here. I obviously have no walls where I'm practicing. Um, but you can move into legs up the wall if you wish. I'm just going to do it lying on my mat because it feels really good for me. If you choose to do legs up the wall with an actual wall, you might stay there for your whole Shavasana. Or I will cue you when it's time to move out of it into your final Shavasana. And you can make that decision as to how you want to spend your uh, rest. So coming onto your back regardless, if you're at the wall or not at the wall, draw your knees in. And we're just going to move into a little spinal twist before we move our legs up to the sky. And I like to rock from side to side and then release the knees. I'm releasing over to the left first. You can release to whichever side is 
calling you, spreading your arms wide. And begin to bring your awareness to the back body as you lie on your back, connected to the earth here. And then drawing back to center. Perhaps we rock from side to side again and then open to your opposite side. Oops. Sorry for that microphone noise there. And then we come back to center and raise your legs, straighten your legs, soles of the feet up to the sky. And if you're outside, open your eyes for a few moments to just see the, the blue, blue sky. Maybe when you're practicing, there might be clothes, clouds floating by. If you're practicing inside, you could close your eyes and just imagine that blue, blue sky. And as thoughts come into your mind, imagine them as clouds just passing by. And now you can stay in this position, whether you're at the wall or not at the wall, for a few minutes longer. Some of you might be ready to move into your final Shavasana. And if that is you, go ahead and make your way into your final Shavasana. And wherever you're at, begin to really find all those parts of you that are connected to the earth right now your shoulder blades your pelvis the back of your head if you're in shavasana the heels your calves perhaps and just feel that support And with that support, allow yourself to move into stillness and into silence. As we allow each and every cell to be energized, because really that's what our cells are, as little bundles of energy. Allow your cells to be, en your cells to be energized by the practice, by the prana, by the movements, by the breath of our practice.
I invite you to stay in your supine position of Shavasana or legs up the wall or begin to move into your meditation seat, whatever is preferable for you. And regardless whether you're changing positions or remaining in the position that you are currently in, just reestablish that sensation of that connection to the solid surface beneath you. Reestablish that connection to your breath and to the flow of the breath in this continuous circle as you inhale and exhale. Always cycling, always continuing. Like the cycles of day and night and the cycles of the seasons. And as you sit or lie with your awareness of breath and awareness of connection to the earth, I leave you with this prayer to Mother Earth. Can we shift our perspective of Earth from being an, obje an object to being a living thing? to Mother Earth from it to her. I bow to you as you offer me everything I need for nourishment and growth. It is your fresh air that we breathe, your clear water that we drink, your nourishing food that we eat and your medicinal herbs that heal us when we are sick. Allow yourself to imagine relaxing into the deep feeling of satisfaction and gratitude and really tuning in to what you receive from the earth today. If you are seated, bring your hands to your heart center. If you are still lying down, you might choose to stay there or make your way to a seat for our closing. And we're going to close with one round of OM. So taking a deep inhale with eyes still closed, if you wish, take an inhale. Exhale out your mouth. Take one more inhale and allow the earth to receive your vibration as we ohm together. Oh. Namaste and have a wonderful Earth Day. Thank you for coming and joining and enjoy your week.